Today marks 100 days since our first case of COVID-19 was identified in Hard our state. To believe it has been 100 days. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Kremji News First at Four. I'm Whitney Ward. We begin with breaking news. Governor Jay Inslee announcing that stay at home, stay healthy order will remain in effect after May 4th, although a new date has not been announced quite yet. If we can avoid uh, having to reinstate these restrictions, we know this very simply. The quickest way to reopen our economy is make sure that we get this job done. Governor Inslee added more information will be released on Friday about the phases that will go through in the state to reopen. The governor also announced new guidelines that will allow hospitals and health care providers to resume non urgent medical procedures. So the guidance says the decision to perform any surgeries or procedures should be weighed against multiple factors, and that includes a patient's health, how their condition is progressing, and the consequences of further delaying a procedure. Hospitals will need to comply with the state's regulations also on PPE. That includes reporting how much they have available, not reusing any equipment that is damaged. Inslee also added that the coronavirus deaths and hospitalizations have been declining in April. However, he says the numbers are not low enough to ensure that they won't continue to go up if we stop social distancing. New in the last hour here, the Spokane County Commissioners have sent a letter to the governor's office asking to open more businesses. That request is that any retailer that could do curbside pickup, online ordering or appointment only options, they would have the ability to operate. Other businesses are medical appointments that are not COVID-19 related, auto and RV sales, landscaping, mobile home hookups and in-home cleaning. County commissioners say this list is limited, but it is a first step in reopening the economy and getting people back to work. So President Trump has also indicated that many states can start to reopen by May 1st. Across the country, governors have been forming PACs like the one here on the West Coast. Those leaders say science and data, not politics, will determine the reopening of each state's economy. And that includes the one here in Washington. Now locally, the question on everyone's mind, of course, is when will the Spokane area reopen? So we want to know what do you think? Are we ready to reopen? Let us know. Just weigh in on our CREM2 mobile app right now. In the meantime, Regina on is joining us live from the newsroom with more on what Washington state leaders are now discussing as a possible regional approach to reopening. Regina. Well, Whitney, Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward says she's in talks with Governor Inzi right now. She's pushing for a regional and slow approach to open up our economy here. Now, on her Facebook page, Woodward responded to state leaders' decisions to discuss a regional reopening. She says our push to be flexible in opening up Spokane County's economy is paying off. The governor is now willing to look at regions of the state with fewer COVID-19 cases. She's also urging people to continue social distancing. City of Spokane Kent spokesperson Brian Coddington also saying regional opening discussions are currently in the works. He says, quote, those conversations are about developing a thoughtful, methodical and flexible plan based on guidance from public health experts to slowly reopen and return to public life. Now, this move also getting support from Spokane County Health Officer Dr. Bob Lutz. He says the data right now is supportive of this decision, but Lutz says there is some concern if there happened to be an uptick in cases. We'll be talking with Mayor Woodward tonight, so we'll be sure to bring you those updates to you. Live here in the newsroom, Regina on Krem 2 News. All right, Regina, thank you very much. So earlier we asked you, have you been charged a gym membership since the stay at home order was in force? We talked about that just yesterday. So far, we don't have those results, but we'll get more information about that later on in our newscast. In the meantime, there is new information tonight about the outbreak of coronavirus cases at the Spokane Veterans Home. Dozens of patients are now being transferred to the VA hospital for more in-depth care. A total of 36 residents have tested positive, as well as 14 employees. Man Grandstaff has now created a new COVID-19 unit by converting a community living center to handle a surge of veterans who test positive for the virus here in the Spokane area. Health officials say the VA Medical Center will offer more focused care with an on-site ICU and daily visits from a physician. It also means specialized rooms for patients to help with infection control. Today on a conference call, officials wanted to make it clear it doesn't matter where these patients get treated, only that they get the best possible care. I don't believe they were doing anything wrong. As a matter of fact, I hail their efforts 
and their focus on veterans' health. I think this was an effort by the director of the Mangrand Staff Department, I'm sorry, of the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs to add some additional care and focus on their residents to improve outcome. So a total of 29 patients are being transferred to the VA Medical Center of the 36 who have tested positive so far. They are mostly being moved by ambulance under strict containment procedures. We're also told the hospital can accept additional COVID-19 patients if necessary. In Idaho, the state is testing enough people that it can begin easing restrictions starting on May 1st. That is according to a recent Harvard analysis. That study found that more than half of all U.S. states do still need to step up their testing in order to meet the opening deadline of May 1st. Now, the study researchers say they categorized the state based on the size of the outbreak, not the state population. For example, in New York, they are way behind on testing. Idaho is in the range of tests needed. That's because New York has been the hardest hit state in the country. The state is about 100,000 tests behind their 130,000 per day goal. In the meantime, Idaho right now only needs to be testing 260 people per day to start easing some of those restrictions. In Ritzville this morning, dozens of cars lined up for free potatoes. The spuds were being given away by Washington potato farmers. And it's all because demand for potatoes sold in restaurants has taken a hard hit following the coronavirus pandemic. Creme 2's Taylor Vida was at that giveaway this morning and has more now on how local farmers are being impacted. So these were the potatoes that they were given away Wednesday morning. Russets, in fact, the same ones that McDonald's uses, according to the Washington Potato Commission. And pretty early on, as you can see here, several cars showing up, people excited about getting these potatoes, an act of generosity from local farmers during times that are certainly stressful and uncertain. It's good for the community. A community that was clearly ready to get their hands on some free spuds. On Wednesday morning, at least 100 cars, if not more, came to Ritzville for the potato giveaway sponsored by the Washington Potato Commission. Free for the taking, about 36,000 pounds of russet potatoes. It's great. I'm glad they do it. These guys are really good at potatoes. <laughs> They're really good. <laughs> Food banks from as far away as Asotin County showed up for the giveaway as well. Local farmers telling us they wanted to give back, but while spirits were high at the event, free taters also represented a grim reality for Washington potato farmers. We have storages full of potatoes. They have no place to go. Marvin Woolman grows potatoes in Grant County and is also a member of the state's potato commission. The group says coronavirus is severely impacting the industry because the vast majority of Washington potatoes are eventually processed into things like french fries and tater tots and those products are then sold in restaurants. But with social distancing restrictions due to coronavirus still happening, farmers say weakened demand is hurting them. Everything's backing up. Processors are having to shut down because their, uh, their uh, freezers are full. That's leading growers to plant fewer crops and potato processors to cut contracts, Woman says. He adds that uncertainty surrounding the virus isn't helping either. The longer this continues, the worse this is going to get. Wednesday's giveaway not only represented an opportunity for growers to get rid of potatoes that were just sitting around, it was also a chance to give thanks to essential workers and those in need. People are hungry and need a, need, still are hungry and we decided let's donate and uh, maybe help some people out. In Ritzville, Taylor Vido, Cram 2 News. Well, it is also National Small Business Week. This morning, we highlighted Spokane small businesses who are working to help the community, like Audrey's Boutique, a, clothing, a women's clothing store with a rich history here in Spokane. Business owner Victoria Novacek Ferro says this type of small business is a testament to why shopping local is the foundation of any community. So here's how she has had to adjust and how fellow business owners are also stepping up to help. I'm a small business owner. This is my livelihood. It's like, okay, now I got to punt. So it's time to pivot and do something that will work and try to find something that'll work. So I started doing Facebook live videos from my home, which made my house a little chaotic, but you know, it is what it is. They seem to work. We seem to got some sales from it, which was great. I don't have a website. I only have a Facebook page. So it was a matter of what am I going to do to make this work? This business that I own, I'm the fourth owner, and it's over 50 years old, and I'll be damned if this virus is going to make it go under. 
the small businesses here in Spokane are what make up the character of this city, as far as I'm concerned. And we are the people that non profits come to for support, whether it's a donation or financial, you know, a physical donation or financial donation. We're the ones that help make the whole quilt of what Spokane is and the flavor of Spokane. What I've appreciated is other small business owners have come to me and said, hey, did you see this? Or I can go to them and say, I took I took advantage of this. Why don't you try it? Um, there's no, it's not a competition. It's more of a camaraderie of a let's come together and be a community and make this work. And, and I appreciate that very much. My slogan has always been from day one, shop local, give local. And it's, this is, if any time is, is appropriate, that's appropriate, now is the time. There was a woman named Audrey and she started this store um, for post mastectomy clients. And we have for over 50 years helped women who have been diagnosed with breast cancer, help them with their post-surgical needs. And we've walked that journey with them. I'm a certified mastectomy fitter. Um, but we also do traditional bra fittings as well. We're selling gift certificates over the phone. Um, and if you buy a hundred dollar gift certificate, we're adding 10%, like 10% on top of it. So it would be 110. You know, when we can open, um, your dollar will go a little bit further. So Audrey's Boutique is located on Division, where Victoria says she just can't wait to open those doors again. If you have other local businesses that are maybe looking forward to that you're looking forward to shopping at after the stay at home order is lifted, we'd love to know. Just text us at 509-448-2000. So earlier we asked you if you think Washington State is ready to, re to reopen and look at that right now, it's pretty much split half and half of you thinking yes, half of you thinking no. So keep those votes coming and we'll revisit that here a little bit later in the evening. All right, we also wanna get to some of the top stories that you need to know today. You'll have to wear a face mask if you're going to shop at Costco, the Washington based wear House says that customers are going to be required to wear face masks in all of its stores. However, that new rule does not apply to children under the age of two. Anyone who's unable to wear a face mask because of some kind of medical medical condition, they are also exempt. If you'd like more information about these new policies, the keyword just text us the keyword shop to 448-2000. That number located right there at the bottom of your screen. You can also go to crime.com for more information. The FDA is asking hand sanitizer producers to make them taste worse. Apparently, the agency is asking manufacturers to make the products taste bitter so that kids or people won't consume them. Manufacturers can do that by adding denatured alcohol. According to the FDA, calls to poison control related to hand sanitizer have jumped by 79% compared to last March. Just a reminder, having any kind of disinfectant that you ingest, that is not going to work. It is not a proven method to cure the coronavirus and it is not going to keep you from getting sick, but it will absolutely make you sick. All right, despite some overcast skies today, Spokane reaching the warmest day of the year so far, I'm pretty sure by a lot. Tom Sherry is joining us now live from home and Tom, I hope so you're not outside. I thought for sure you would be outside enjoying it, but did you get a chance to at least get out today? Yeah, today was a lawn mowing lawn mowing day. Uh -huh. We did our lawn and, you know, a lot of lawn service. Well, we do our own lawn anyway, right? Uh, so we did our lawn, but uh, our next door neighbors, they have a lawn service and that service hasn't become, uh, hasn't been able to get here. So we went over and did that lawn and then we went up and did your mother's lawn, right? Because her lawn service wasn't able. So it was a lawn mowing day. So yeah, we were out and about, but uh, we came inside uh, for this afternoon and... Uh, I tell you what, it's just another day. It's another blurs day uh, as this uh, quarantine just continues. But my gosh, what a day temperature wise. I told you yesterday we'd get into the 70s. Right now, the current temperature is 77 degrees. My gosh, look at that. You can see the wind is out of the south southwest at 17 miles per hour. So we got a bit of wind blowing around the region. When you take a look at the uh, satellite and radar picture, we actually had a few uh, thunderstorms that were taking place down into areas of the pollution loose and into uh, areas of northern Idaho. Uh, there you can see it right. Oh, did we get that? Yeah, there you can see it right there. And again, most of the shower activity to the east of us, uh, as I said before, over in areas of western or uh, northern Idaho and then into western Montana. Uh, looks like my computer here has gone a little kablooey. Um, 
Whitney, so I'll tell you that the overnight low tonight will be 45 degrees and then we'll look for a high again tomorrow. We should get into the 70s again tomorrow. So uh, just really good looking weather. Uh, actually, we'll get into the mid 60s tomorrow, but I do think we'll see low 70s roll around just in time for Saturday. So pretty good looking weather there. Can we go over to the Creme 2 uh, weather window? Let's do it. It's the remote weather window, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll take an observation. Yeah, we've got some high clouds out there. And we've got uh, also some clearing, just depends where you're looking, and a bit of a breeze blowing. We talked about that wind out of the south-southwest at 17 miles per hour. And, of course, we're seeing showers in northern Idaho and even a few isolated thunderstorms. So we'll have more with your seven-day forecast. That's all coming up in a few minutes. All right, looking forward to it, Tom. Thank you very much. All right, back in March, the CDC reported household pets likely cannot transmit the coronavirus to you. But still ahead... His symptoms were really very mild. So one quarantined family discovered their pet's cough was more symptomatic than they thought. We'll have details on that, but before we head to break, a quick shout out to Lauren. She is a senior at Mead High School. Her mom says Lauren has moved mountains and grown so much during her senior year. She says she's a great student and now a great young adult. So we wish Lauren the absolute best. And hey, we love giving a shout out to all of those spectacular seniors here in our area. So please keep sending in your photos. All you have to do is text 2020 to 509 448 and then we'll immediately send you a link on how you can submit the senior in your life. We're here on Creme 2. We'll be right back.